Knuckles. And I want to talk about feedback right here. And feedback is how information about the game state is communicated to the player, and this is usually in response to player actions. It includes visual things, auditory things, and very rarely tactile feedback if you're, if you're working with rumble packs or other force feedback devices. This whole game is very carefully tuned, very carefully balanced. Uh, the design space, I thought it wasn't going to have much of a differentiation between the characters when I first played it. I was like, why are there so many characters? But when you play it, you realize, oh, every single shot matters, every single rate of fire matters, every single nuanced detail uh, matters when you're going for high score. And every and when you're pushing for those, those S plus ranked objectives, every little move that you make, where your character's facing, where you decide to move on the map, what enemies are there, what drops, energy, batteries, power-ups are nearby, all that matters. And you have to really make a whole bunch of decisions on the fly. At this point, I want to talk about what role feedback plays into both understanding what the game is and how players enjoy it. And I'm saying, it's imperative that a game state be as clear as possible. I could rewrite that sentence and you would never know that it was a bad sentence. The feedback for the game state is as clear as possible. Super imperative. Um, I played a lot of games that have a lot of interesting ideas. I played a lot of games that have cool mechanics, cool graphics, cool characters, whatever. But for some reason, when everything gets going and the gameplay gets sort of intense, the feedback of the game just drops dramatically. You can't tell where your character is because of bad camera. You can't tell which enemies you hit. You can't tell what's going on. And feedback, I feel like it's a major area that a lot of action games completely drop the ball on. Um, it's hard enough for 3D games, but still, there's just a lot of little things about communicating what's happening in the game so players can therefore make an informed decision and therefore um, make more skillful decisions and really take ownership of what's happening. So here's a, a quick list of all the interesting things I think are cool in Assault Andrew and Cactus. Uh, the soundscape is minimal. And even though I have music turned off, you can really hear that uh, the soundscape is mostly used for enemy explosions, Android chatter, when they're talking about, you know, battery up, uh, lost the battery, whatever, they say specific phrases that let you know, even if it's happening off screen, those phrases are super important. Battery here, shut down. Because if you miss a battery, you really need to turn up the, the rate at which you kill enemies to push towards that next battery cycle. Um, when you grab a power-up, they, they always say something, when you grab two of the same power-ups, they have a specific phrase that says, oh, more firepower, like, oh, that means I grabbed two firepower power-ups, and and it just keeps you knowing exactly what's happening, even if you grab the power-up without seeing exactly what it was. Uh, and the weapon status, so when your weapon's at max, your character says, you know, weapon max. Should happen pretty soon. Firepower. Free fire. Weapon max. Weapon max, so now look at my bullets. Uh, the enemy health is visible by their coloration. So I'm gonna shoot that guy. See how he's getting more and more red? So I'm gonna shoot that guy. That guy's purple, so I know he took more damage. That guy's red. Uh, the power-up cycles are visible via an animation and a little timer. So you can see on the, the power-up when it's about to change and cycle between red. Uh, it goes blue to red, red to yellow, and yellow to blue. You can see exactly when that's gonna happen because there's a tiny little timer and that information is there for you. And I've used it a lot when I needed to know exactly how much time I have to stretch out some of my um, offensive abilities. And the energy blinks before it disappears. That's classic NES games, old school games used to do that a lot. Games still do it, but uh, nowadays not so many things disappear when they want you to collect it. Uh, weapon strength levels are reflected in their ranges and sizes. Uh, enemies flash when they're hit, that's super important. Can't believe how many games don't do that nowadays. But um, for a game like this with so many enemies on the screen, if you can't tell which enemies you're hitting and you're shooting a whole bunch of bullets, then that's kind of a bad thing. Figuring out what you're aiming at, where your bullets are going, and if you're actually hitting them, and how much damage you're doing, I feel are really important uh, for action games, but especially for a game like this. Players flash white when they switch, indicating they have invincibility. So that's a really good, um, that's a really good classic kind of feedback. Glowing or flashing white to, to indicate that you're invincible. Blinking is also another thing, but I like the glow better. Um, when enemies are off screen, there are HUD huggers, these tiny little indicators that tell you in which direction the last enemy or the, the next enemy is when it's uh, off screen.
It also indicates their health too. So when I weaken a few of them like this, that one on the left is pink. See how that one indicator is a little bit pink? That means I know there's a weak enemy off the screen. I can aim for it specifically. And bosses have really clear life bars. Their life bars are even tiny little segmented so you can tell how much damage you're doing over time because bosses have a lot more health than normal enemies. But also the boss stages when they go from one stage to another, uh, like classic uh, Zelda style bosses, those stages are marked off in the life bar as well so you know exactly what you're in for. So yeah, every single piece of feedback in this game helped me understand exactly how the game worked and there's not too many rules I mean we went over so many of them so much of so much of it is just apparent based on what it looks like on the screen but knowing exactly how these rules work allows you to make take your skills to the next level it allows you to make super informed decisions without any guesswork without being confused about something without any ambiguity you're just like all in and you can it's all you from there so you know I 100% this game I got all the achievements I S plus every mission uh, it's just a ton of fun highly recommend it Highly, highly recommend it. So the last thing I want to leave you off on is this idea of how the camera plays into what makes this game work. And the angle of the 3D camera is visually more interesting than a strict top-down view. That's what I say for a solid angel cactus. But the angle also makes determining the exact distance of objects a little bit harder just because of that Z-axis bad 3D thing going on. I'll link you to an article about bad 3D um, at the end, I'll link it in the description, but it's something you should check out and be aware of as you're playing 3D games. But moving to the top of the screen, especially against large bosses, it's hard to see through objects, so you might have a harder time as the as your character moves further and further away from the screen to, to aim and dodge as well. Not aim, but mostly dodging. Um, that's just kind of the reality of a natural drawback that happens from this kind of camera angle. And like I showed you before, you have a little silhouette whenever you pass behind something. So you're never lost at where your character is, and you're never lost as to, um, you're never confused as to what bullets are incoming and if they're dangerous or not, because they're all dangerous and you can see them clearly. So the camera, the last thing is the camera doesn't reveal all the stage. Uh, like I showed you, when enemies are off the screen, they have those indicators, and it does pan around to follow the player. I, I do prefer this. I think it's more important to be able to see everything on the screen at a decent size. Uh, than it is to see everything all at once because if it zooms out too much that's just way too much happening and you don't need to see your bullets trail off forever you don't need that what you need to do is see the exact sort of spacing of the enemies the cluster of enemies uh, what type of enemies they are the coloration of their of their body so you can tell how much hits they need those are the important things and keeping the camera at a good zoom level is what keeps that clear and all the other feedback working because after all if it zooms out too much you wouldn't even be able to see the little timer indicators on the power-ups or anything cool like that so, you know, camera is a really important consideration when we're talking about feedback in games. Oh, so there's a first person mode in this game. And if, if you didn't, if you don't understand just how important the camera is, I could show you a little bit of first person just to let you see that, whoa, right when you take the camera into another perspective, you lose so much important feedback. And that means you start guessing and just kind of, kind of hoping for the best instead of taking the skill into your own hand. I'll show you that. So this is what the bosses look like. They're their own stages. They got their cool little intros. See how the light bar at the bottom is broken up? And if you see it in HD, you can see the tiny little segments. Hopefully that's uh, pretty clear. Much more menacing in first person. See, I just know that I can be in this pocket to stay safe, but if I did, if I if I just played this boss for the first person the first time, I would not be able to see. And the boss's coloration changes for uh, the feedback as well. That's pretty cool. Shoot down. Ooh. Lost the battery. Battery up. I lost it. See, I didn't even know I, I had a battery on the stage, and it said lost the battery. So now I know on the floor there will be these uh, indicators that show when the explosions are about to happen. I just know what's about to happen. So that's how I'm able to stay alive. But if I didn't know to keep moving in this particular pattern, I would not be able to see. Let me get some power. Oh, that's always a hard one to dodge. So this one you got to stay like really close to him. 
And I can hardly tell how far away I'm being right now. So now I'm going to circle him, then dodge straight to the middle, and he still kills me, because I couldn't see exactly how far I was inside. So yeah, first person mode, very different. You saw it for yourself. Feedback design is a big deal for games. Um, it can make or break a well-designed gameplay experience, and picking the right camera angle for your game is the first step to understanding what kind of feedback you need to do in order to uh, keep the player informed. And there's a ton more that I want to talk about in terms of feedback design, but you know, you can check out these two articles that I wrote in the meantime. Uh, here's one. I'll switch it up on you. There we go. So I talked about the boss's health bar, but I wrote an article uh, in 2010. Do, 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 do. These are hardback, uh, hard copy versions of my blog, but if you can see the title, it says, ooh, it's kind of hard to see, Life Bars, the Lifeblood of Strategy. And I feel like you can't make a strategy, you can't make an informed decision, and you can't really exert a lot of uh, skill understanding the particulars and nuance of a game unless you have some really clear feedback. And life bars are some of the best ways to get feedback about enemy states and enemy health. So I talk about different life bars and different things that games do. That's a, that's a fun one. And then there is the this series that I wrote in 2011 called The Coefficient of Clean. And this is all about feedback. So it's all about the various kinds of feedback in games. It's a multi-part series. I talk about I talk about um, different styles of gameplay like run and gun and stop and pop. I talk about hit sparks and HUD notifications and force feedback. I talk about action frequency and all these other concepts that help you understand what I really mean when I say clean design. I, I use a criteria to grade Super Mario Brothers and and Box Life, one of my favorite puzzle games, and my own game, Neo RPG, and so several other games, Geometry Wars included, and I score them based on how uh, clean their feedback is. But that's something you should probably check out if you are not too familiar with the term or you really want to understand um, feedback in terms of how important it is for skill-based gameplay. So yeah, that's everything I wanted to talk about in terms of uh, Assault Android Cactus. Fantastic game, so many more things there, but Paying attention to its design space and feedback, I felt like were the two really interesting ways to convey to you how much this game has to offer. Um, you know, it's on Steam. I got to meet the developers before and chat with them actually in a design-oriented video interview, so you can check that out too if you are interested in Assault Android Cactus or one of the best twin-stick shoot 'em up games I've ever played. So that was today's episode of Design Over Time. You can follow us at Design Oriented, or you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, send your questions my way. Send them into the comments below. Send them to me on Twitter, and I'll answer them. Don't worry about it. Uh, we got a new episode every day, and hopefully we're going to be making our way to some really interesting stuff. So you should follow along, share with your friends, and I'll see you guys tomorrow on the next episode of Design Over Time.